So now we want to do member member two. So if member two, same thing, you gotta find your K2, right? K2 equal to A E over 50 was the same length. And our K2, if we look back at uh, the original problem that we solved above, remember this is symmetric, so I don't need to do that out. So this is our K2, right? So exactly the same thing as we did up here. We set our force vector equal to our K, that was K1, times our U. And remember with our K2, we are looking at standing at node 2, and we're looking up at node 3, right? So then that shows us that it's going to be U 2X, U 2Y, U 3X, U 3Y, right? So let's write this out in the form of K2 times our displacement vector. 2x due to 2, f2y due to 2, same thing guys, ae over 50. And I'm going to refrain right now from writing in those because we've got our displacement vector. And now remember our u3x and our u3y are values. Just like what we did above, we're going to look at our u2x, that's 0, and that's 0 at y, right, or at uh, node number 2, because we've got a pin support. Another pin, so we're not going to allow any movement. So u2x, u2y are 0, therefore let's cross this out, cross this out, cross that out, and cross that out. So now we just got 3, we're down to the 3, or sorry, we're down to 2 by 2 matrix again, right? Exactly the same thing. So now it's really easy, really repetitive. We want to find F3X again, but now it's due member 2. Remember that, okay, guys? So F3X, looking at third row, we're looking at this row. So then we've got our AE over 50. All right, so there it is. And just remember, look at the negatives here, guys. This is going to make or break your, your question. So we had a negative 0.48 so I've just taken that outside of the bracket here and remember this is also negative so then we're going to end up adding these together. So then we got F3X due to number 2. If you do this out, multiply this out, you get 37.6 kilonewtons. Alright, so there's the first one. So now we've got to solve for the Y. Right, so F3Y, same thing, but we're looking at this row now. Um, so, I mean, you're probably pretty bored of this by now because I know it's super easy. You can fast forward if you want, but I'm going to write out every step. Remember, 2, 3Y equals AE over L. And now we've got, where are we? Negative 0.48 and 0.64. So, negative 0.48, remember, because now we're looking at the bottom row. The bottom row there times u3x plus 0.64 times u3y. So what does this give us? We got area. Okay, so just make sure you recognize that we've got this one's negative, and we've got another negative here. So we're going to get a negative, a negative number. So keep that in mind. So F3Y due to member 2 was equal to minus 50.2 kilonewtons, okay? So now looking back at our picture, what have we done? What have we solved for? We looked at F2 of X, F, or sorry, we've looked at this guy here. So now we've just found F3X due to member 2 and f 3 y due to member two right so we've solved for for those guys now so what we need to do we got to take the magnitude again right so we know that big f let's go at member two remember this superscript means member two is equal to little f so the force in member two is equal to 62.7 Kilonewtons. 
So there we go, that's the force in member two. Now, one more thing we gotta do, we gotta solve for the force in member three. That is easy, you guessed it, we literally do the same thing. Not very exciting stuff, it gets too easy. All right, so we wanna write this in the form of our F equals K three times our displacement vector. So we're looking back at our picture, our diagram here, we've got we're standing at node number three, looking up at four. So our three is gonna come first and then our four. So if you remember our stiffness matrix, AE over 20, remember now we're dealing with a different length. We got 20 meters, so that's important. Can't forget about that. A3 matrix times U3X, U3Y, U4X, U4Y. So if you remember again, node number four is a fixed support. So that is zero, that is zero. And as such, we can cross this out again, cross this out, cross this out, and cross this out. So now we're just dealing with, again, a 2 by 2. And if we look back up, you remember that was 0, 0, 0, 1, right? Because we're looking at stiffness matrix K, where are we? Stiffness matrix K3, all the way back up here. This was it, right? This was it. So we're looking back down here. We got zero, 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 one. So that's super easy. So now doing the matrix multiplication, we got a zero row, right? So we don't even need to calculate this. We just we know three x due to three that equals zero. That's easy. So now we're just checking out you know f three y due to three. That equals something. Don't forget the twenty. 0, so we've got 0 plus negative 1.32 times 10 to the minus 3. So you calculate this out, we're going to get 3, f of 3y due to member 3 is equal to minus 66 kilonewtons on the dot, right? And we know that since there's no f of x, that f in member 3 the total force in member three, take the magnitude, and you're just going to get 66 squared minus 66 squared plus zero squared square root equals 66 kilonewtons. Boom. That's it. So what we've done, we've solved for the forces in each member. Each member. So to summarize, F1 was 20.5 kilonewtons. F2 was 67, nope, 62.7 kilonewtons. And F3 was 66 kilonewtons. And that was it. So what we did, let's just summarize really quick. We took our local stiffness matrix local stiffness matrix for each member that we were solving the forces for. So for example, member one, we took our stiffness matrix one, right? Stiffness matrix one that we already solved for. Check out my other video if you are having trouble coming up with your stiffness matrix. Um, local or global, this is part two of that video, just a reminder, so I'll have the link somewhere in this video. You can check that out if you haven't done so already. But okay, so we had our local stiffness matrix for each member and we put it in the form of x equals k times our displacement vector and we've already solved for our displacements in the previous video again check it out and using matrix multiplication exactly the same as we do with a one-dimensional system we solve for our forces in the x direction and then again in the y direction once we have the forces in the x direction and the y direction, those are components. So remember, those are only the components, and what we need to do, we need to find the magnitude. And that gave us the 20.5 kilonewtons. 
Similarly, remember two, we did the exact same thing. Remember the zero displacements, those rows and columns cancel out. We get a square matrix. Two by two, everything's good. Or just displacements in the x direction, we know. Displacement in the y direction, we know. Matrix multiplication. Get our forces in the x and y direction. Take the magnitude. And there we go. We get the force in second member. And finally, member three, exactly the same thing, but we, this one we had an easier matrix. It was nice because we had a 90 degree angle. So we just had to do one matrix multiplication because we had a zero row. So we had 3x was equal to zero. 3y was minus 66 kilonewtons. Take the magnitude. And we still got 66 kilonewtons in the third member. So that is it, everybody. We have now solved the three member problem in two dimensions. We found the forces, and then we found, or sorry, we found the displacements at the third node, because that was the only free node that was able to move, so we found the displacements at the third node, and then also the forces within each member. So thanks for watching. If you like my content, please subscribe, share, and like, and check out my website. There's going to be a link in the description.